Es una mujer de conciencia, es una mujer de la verdad y siempre lo cuento. I want to tell you that um, I've known Diane for a long time and she's always been there for all of us. Whether it's children, whether it's women, whether it's minorities, she has always been there for all of us. Now I want to pass it over to our great senator who always says he represents the People's Republic of Knob Hill. <laughs> So with that, I give you Cisco McSorley. Before we go any further, will everybody that's a co-host of this great event please raise your hand? We have some of the most wonderful co-hosts. This has got to be the greatest turnout I've ever seen in these two little small spaces. Thank you all for coming. And. I want to tell you a couple of things, first of all. <laughs> Susanna Martinez I've known as chairman of the Senate Judiciary for about eight years. In those eight years, she's never once told the committee the truth. She has advocated for laws that were the most extreme and unwise and unconsidered. But more than that, I want to tell you about one specific instance I had with her. As you all know, she's the DA down in Las Cruces. And she came up to advocate for Katie's Law, and she brought a whole posse with her of her supporters. And she got up in front of the committee and said, you have to pass this law. This is the law that allows people to take DNA of people just that are arrested. You're not convicted of a crime, you're just arrested. This is what she said. We have somebody who's dead. I brought her mother up. I brought all these people up with me. And we know who did it. And the only reason we can't arrest him is because we don't have his DNA. But I'll tell you what, if you pass this law, and this is what she said, if you pass this law, we'll think of an excuse to arrest him. How does that sound to an American citizen? To have, to have the government inventing an excuse to arrest you. Well, you want to know what? He was not guilty. He went in voluntarily later on and gave his DNA. That was an innocent human being, an innocent New Mexican, who was wrongly accused by this woman who thinks she should be our governor. So I've had a lot of experience with this woman. If you need any more, I've got other stories about it. I don't want to get too excited here, so calm me down. <laughs> but on the other hand, on the other hand, there's another candidate running for governor. And her name is soon to be revealed. <laughs> you know, the first candidate that I talked about has tried to blame everything they can on her. But you know what? She's not the governor. But in her capacity, under the statutes, she has one job. And one of those jobs is to run the Mortgage Finance Authority. As chairman of the Mortgage Finance Authority, you notice they never talk about what she did? Do you know why? Because she came in and she cleaned it up. You heard about the Mortgage Finance Authority in the newspapers? She cleaned it up. You heard about it because she cleaned it up. The other thing that the Mortgage Finance Authority does is create low-income and medium-income housing. And they do it by passing bonds. Under her leadership, last year, we were the only state in the nation that passed bonds for low-income housing. And that's because of Diane. Now, I know you're not going to hear about those things in the journal, and uh, I can't imagine why, but I, just tune in to KKOB, I'm sure they'll say it. But I have sat with this woman late at night in a dark chamber called the Senate floor, and she brought light to that chamber. If you want to know about honesty, if you want to know about fair play, 
treating the opposition fairly, this woman epitomizes all of that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our next governor, Diane Dennett. <laughs> 